In today's video, I've got another amplifier roundup for you. This is one that a lot of people have been asking for. So without further ado, let's dig into today's amp shootout. <laughs> folks, Jack here from Peach Guitars with another amplifier roundup video. We're trying to bring these back in a slightly different way. Rather than pitching this as a shootout, I just want to show you three of the best amps of a particular category and I'm going to let you make the decision as to which is your favourite and the best for your tonal needs. So we've done a few different categories before but the one that's always been missing and the one that always gets asked about in the comments sections is to compare a few small lower powered American clean amps. Now there's a typical term that applies to these amps known as blackface and if you're unaware what that refers to is the fact that in 1964 Fender shifted the cosmetic design and the tonal design of their amplifiers to feature black pine cabinets with a silver grill cloth and a black instrument control panel on the front of the amp. So they changed the aesthetic, they also changed the tone to be much cleaner, to be a little bit more scooped in the mid-range and to incorporate the now famous reverb and vibrato circuits. Now for a lot of people, this kind of amplifier has been the go-to if you want a compact, portable, pedal platform type amp. But in a lot of cases, I think that that pedal platform term maybe sells these amps a little bit short of how brilliant they actually are. The classic Fender American Clean Tone has been coined by so many different boutique amplifier builders now that there's really a lot of options out there for you. And you can quite happily just plug straight into one of these amps and using your guitar's volume controls and maybe one or two pedals on the floor, you can create a whole wealth of different tones. It really is, for a lot of people, the only type of amplifier that you may ever need. Let me also just mention that I'm gonna play all three of these amps today with an amazing Fender Custom Shop 61 reissue Strat with a rosewood board. I think this kind of guitar is the, uh, the perfect marriage for these kind of amplifiers in a lot of people's minds. So hopefully this guitar will do these amps justice. <coughs> So to start in the most obvious place, of course, I've got Fender's offering. Now they did recently put out from their custom shop the 64 Deluxe Reverb reissue, which I don't have on hand at the moment. I wanted to go straight for the kind of core amplifier of their existing vintage reissue range, which is the 65 Deluxe Reverb. It's a lot more affordable than that custom shop variant, and it's also a lamp, an amp that I think a lot more people have personal experience with. So this is a great reference point. It's a great sounding amp in its own right anyway but this is a nice flatbed reference point with which I can compare two American boutique alternatives. So the 65 vintage reissue lineup from Fender consisted of a few different models of differing sizes and different wattages. You had the Princeton, which is kind of the baby of the group. You had a few bigger models like the Super Reverb and the Twin Reverb. And the one that sits right in the middle, the Goldilocks amp, is the 22 watt Deluxe Reverb. This amp has a one by 12 combo speaker cabinet, puts out about 22 watts of power, it has a 5 AR4 rectifier tube in the amp circuit as well, which I'm going to come on to later when I talk about the other amps. That's quite an important factor in this amp's sound. You've also got the onboard reverb and tremolo, or vibrato, as Fender dub it. As I mentioned before, you've got a two-channel uh, two design as well. One channel which incorporates those effects and one which does not. There's also, on the normal channel, no bright cap. So what that means is that I find you can use this amp a little bit more for kind of some nice flat clean tones on the normal channel as opposed to the vibrato channel which is a little bit more hyped in those high frequencies. This amp comes with a Jensen C12K loudspeaker which is a very loud speaker indeed. It's plenty efficient enough for any guitar playing situation and I think you find a lot of guitar players 
whatever kind of gigs they're playing or recording sessions, whatever they're playing situation, a deluxe reverb will usually cut it 95% of the time. And there is an old saying that if a deluxe reverb won't cut it in your band, then your band is probably too loud. So to demonstrate this amp's capabilities, not only by itself, but also how it takes pedals in that pedal platform manner, I'm gonna play a couple of clips on the amp. One where I'm using the vibrato channel with some onboard reverb. And when you hear overdrive, it's courtesy of the King Tone Duelist overdrive pedal. It absolutely just melds with this kind of amp so beautifully. And I think any kind of mid rich overdrive pedal, so be that a tube screamer or a blues breaker style pedal, anything like that, it just completely fuses with the front end of this amplifier in a really natural sounding way. You may find that certain distortion pedals that have less of a mid range push can sometimes sound a little bit brittle with this kind of amp. So I tend to have an aversion to using those, but with any mid rich overdrive pedal, this amp works an absolute treat. And I also wanted to show you on the normal channel how you can crank that up, use the guitar volume for your dynamics, but you just get this really gorgeous tube saturated tone. It doesn't have quite as much high end, doesn't have the reverb or the tremolo, but it's really dynamic and really punchy.
All right, so amp number two is from our friends at Tone King. Now, Tone King has established itself as one of the best names in the boutique alternative amplifier world. They make a great range of products, all the way from the little baby Gremlin amplifier, which we featured on the channel before, and it was very, very popular with a lot of you out there. And then you kind of get onto the bigger models like the Sky King, but once again, the happy medium for most people is this, the Imperial Mark II. So this is really their take on replicating some of what makes the deluxe reverb so great, but they also wanted to push it into a more modern direction and afford you a few more player-friendly features on board as well. So, like the Deluxe Reverb from Fender, the Tone King has about 20 watts of output power, courtesy of two 6V6 power tubes. It's also got a 5AR4 tube rectifier in there, which gives that nice tube sag and compression in the feel. Now, this is also a twin-channel amp like the Deluxe Reverb, but unlike having two identical-sounding channels, the Tone King has a rhythm and a lead channel. Now that lead channel will advance you further on from the typical mid-60s Fender tone and actually afford you some 50s style tweed tones if that's what you want. You can get a little bit more overdrive out of this channel and you can use the really powerful mid-bite control to push forward the mid-frequencies and get some of those tweed style tones. If you use it in the right way with an overdrive pedal you'll actually get in to some more British style tones as well. Now what's nice is that the reverb and the tremolo on board this amp work on both channels and this amp also has Tone King's very, very clever Iron Man 2 attenuator on board. Now the Iron Man 2 is a very clever attenuator in that it has several increments that allow you to drop the overall volume of this amp. So you can crank it up, get that natural power tube drive, but manage the volume level in a much more practical way. But what I really like about this attenuator is that you can choose either to use it on both the rhythm and lead channel, so you can drive both channels and bring the volume down on both, or you can apply it just to the lead so that you can have a really driven lead sound but leave the rhythm channel wide open, unattenuated and sparkly clean. The Tone King amp comes with a proprietary eminence design speaker on board and this is entirely hand wired so it's a slight step above the Fender amplifier, the Tone King is 100% hand wired. What's interesting between the first two amplifiers is that they are very similar on paper so I'll let you be the judge and let me know in the comments whether you think it's worth paying some of the boutique prices for an amp like a Tone King when it actually sounds very, very similar to a Fender Deluxe Reverb. That choice is yours, but I personally think that some of the advancements the Tone King have does make it worth it over the price of the Fender.
Okay, so the last of the three amps here is the smallest in stature, but in fact everything else outweighs the other two amps quite significantly. So I'm talking about the newish Two Rock Studio Signature. So this amplifier came out a couple of years ago as a replacement for Two Rock's Studio Pro line of amplifiers. At the time, the Studio Pro was billed as the slightly more affordable and more portable and compact options from Two Rock's line, kind of distilling what made some of the great 100 watt big iron Two Rock amps so good in a smaller package. The studio signature aimed to just advance that theory. So this is literally a distillation now of the classic reverb signature, which is Two Rock's flagship 100 watt amplifier, but they've put it into a 35 watt 6L6 driven package. So you get more output power than both of these two amplifiers. You also get a different output tube type in terms of 6L6 versus 6V6, which gives you a larger frequency range response more headroom and less overall compression. Being a distillation of the bigger two rock amps as well, this amp does not have a tube rectifier. This has a solid state rectifier, which also gives a more immediate feel and again com contributes to a bit more headroom in the amp and it remains a little stiffer in the low frequencies if you want to overdrive the amp rather than these two with their tube rectifier. Now the two rock affords you quite a few extra features as well over these two amps, including a passive effects loop, you have three individual boost uh, EQ switches on the front panel. You've got a bright switch, a mid switch, and a deep switch. In addition to the three band EQ, as well as a global presence and individual send and return controls for the reverb. So it's a little bit more advanced. It's a little bit more in keeping with what Two Rock is best known for in their larger amplifiers. But most crucially, this amp comes with a three position gain structure switch, which allows you to tailor the feel and response of this amp all the way from Two Rock's own signature voicing, a voicing that's derived from the Matt Schofield signature amp, which is a bit more compressed, which you're gonna hear in the second of the two clips of this amp. But my favorite on this amp is the blackface style uh, gain structure mode, which is a lot cleaner, has less of a mid-range focus, and sounds more in keeping with the other two amps in the shootout today. Now the other ace up the Two Rock sleeve that it has, unlike either of the other two amplifiers, is that this studio signature amp is available either in this compact 1x12 format, which is actually one of the limited edition red suede finishes, which I think looks pretty cool, or you can get it in a compact head version as well if you want to drive your own speaker cabinet. So as with all the other amps, you're going to hear two clips of the Two Rock. I've gone for one, which is basically the most standard blackface style clean that I could get out of this amp, though you're going to hear the advances of the extra power, the extra headroom that the 35 watts will give you over the 20. I also wanted to show you how you can really fine tune this amp, drive it a little bit harder and get a thicker tone than either of these amps can give you by using the mid and deep switches and driving the gain as well as using that Matt Schofield mode on the gain structure switch. This is really a plug and play amp, though it will take pedals very, very well, as do the other two amps. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, folks, so I hope you've enjoyed this roundup. Like I said at the start, this isn't a shootout because I love each of these three amps and I think they all have their own individual strengths. I think that the 65 Deluxe Reverb from Fender more than holds its own in certain situations with the bigger price tag boutique alternatives. Though there is just certain elements to the tone that the boutique amps do push on a little bit further. It maybe reminisces a little bit more closely to what those vintage amps had and it also gives you some more modern options on board as well, which makes these amps a touch more practical if you're willing to spend the extra money. But I wanna know what you think, so let me know in the comments which of these three amps is your favorite take on the Blackface Fender style sound. And if you think there's an obvious omission that I've left out today, let me know what your favorite Blackface style amp is in the comments below as well. And do us a favor, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and make sure you're subscribed to the Peach Guitars channel as well as the Peach Boutique channel so you don't miss out on any content from us in the future. Also, if you've enjoyed this type of amp roundup video, then check the link in the description below to our playlist of all the other type of amp roundup videos that we've done before, where you're gonna hear a few different categories of amplifiers compared in the same manner as this video today. So that's it, thanks a lot for watching folks. If you want more information on each of these three amps or any of the other products that I've shown you in the video today, you can click the link for peachguitars.com in the description below and find out all the information that you wanna know over there. So that's it, take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.